Yeah, let's do this one. Joey Negro has changed his name. Are you familiar with this story? So, as I mentioned previously with the Black Madonna um, story that broke a couple of days ago, it seems as if there's like a concentrate. Well, I, I guess as a consequence to the untimely passing of George Floyd and the uh, the kind of uh, revitalization of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, all aspects of you know um, non yeah every aspect of diversity or every aspect of social injustice is kind of being addressed now. Right, people are taking advantage of the eyes and the ears and the seriousness with which these issues are being dealt with, and you know basically. Put, put in their case forward whether it's you know um awards for literature whether it's for diversity the electronic music scene everyone is basically trying to fight their case and part of it has been this really weird split within the techno dance community scene right underground music culture whatever you maybe call it where a, a kind of really committed group of deep people in the industry who mostly refer to as a techno Twitter that are really outspoken about social issues and shady stuff that's going on in the industry have essentially used this opportunity to really call out a lot of stuff and kind of um, make us question why things were let you know to slide for so long that way when they could have just been changed from the beginning and one of those things was dj names right so you got the black madonna you know the name i always thought was a bizarre for a really pale white woman to have the name of the black madonna this didn't make any sense and of course when she dug into it a bit deeper and you heard her speak in the interview it was relating to the catholic saint the black madonna and you know how it was depicted and the illustrations and stuff that 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 cool but it just seemed weird, in it, just to call yourself that. And another one that was always strange to me, and again, someone I'm a fan of, because I you know I play a lot of disco, um, I play a lot of house, a lot of, some, a lot of cool edits in that, or new disco re-edits. And one of the main p protagonists of making really good re-edits of classic disco, funk, soul tunes is none other than Joey Negro. And he has fallen victim to the change of name guillotine. And uh, um, credit to him, he actually did change it, because... It's all well and good being called out in public, right? But I do sometimes get the feeling, especially when you get called out in public by people who are pretty outspoken and have a way of commanding or have a way of speaking online that can come across a little bit mean and a little bit um, aggressive to then um, to, to, to seriously listen to it and take action just does speak a lot for who that person is. Maybe again, maybe to be a bit cynical maybe they're doing it because they just want to save their career they're quaking their boots but a part of me still thinks that the majority of people especially if you look yeah that's the majority of people i say there's a split in terms of the fans of electronic music who care about this sort of issues and there's a split who there's a segment of the population who don't care who just have no no care in the world and i think a good illustration of that is if you go on do you remember this that sarah kin girl that had that fuck the bpm t-shirt right if you go on each platform where she posted her apology twitter instagram and facebook especially facebook and instagram they're completely different responses than what she got on twitter twitter's where she got called out and basically dragged in public but when she posted the apology on instagram no one really cared they didn't really know what was going on when she posted her apology on facebook no one really knew what was going on either so it's not within it's not really set up in a way where it's really um to their benefit that they kind of back under the pressure and kind of acquiesce to the demands of the mob really if they don't want to change their name they don't need to no one's really going to notice right um it's only a small minority on twitter that i sort of vocalized again but i thought it was an interesting topic anyway regardless and i think um the name was if you just look at it from the outside perspective it is a bit weird isn't it to have like a dude whose name is what dave lee or something right um called himself joey negro but it's i'm also got a bit of sympathy for it too because i think as an artist you should be allowed to have creative license to kind of name your works be influenced by be inspired by co-opt or take from different places to make your art you know with impunity really you shouldn't be restricted to oh you can only take inspiration from this certain um area of history or from this particular background of people like that's not what art is about really in it um, I would think so, but let's just read the article and see what he has to say for it. So this is from Resident Advisor. It says Dave Lee drops Joey Negro stage name. Now, to be honest, just optically looking, right? Joey Negro looks like a far more interesting and cooler name than Dave Lee. You can't really blame him for choosing that name. And I think we've, we've all been there, innit? No? I know when I first started DJing, I went through like, what, six different names, right? 
until I landed on handsome black man. Even that, I'm still a bit like, it's a bit cringe. But it's really difficult to come up with a good name, right? Um, especially if you've got, I don't know, a pretty standard run-of-the-mill, you know, English Dave Lee sort of name. I, I'd imagine coming up with something a little bit more exotic, quote-unquote, without using the worst term, right? Using a 50-cent term would be pretty difficult as well um, to land it. Um, but yeah, let's read the article. So the English producer will no longer use his most famous al alias, he announced in a Facebook post. Uh, Dave Lee will no longer use his alias Jerry Negro. The English producer addressed the name change in a Facebook post today in which he also explained how he came up with his most famous, um, sorry, with his most popular alias in 1990 and why he continues to using it for three decades. <sighs> 30 years though, bros. God damn, it's a long time, isn't it? It's all well and good way to change. That's why... Ugh. So I wonder how the I wonder how those people feel that were calling him out for it. Is it be, is it better never than late that he's doing it now, or do you still feel a bit annoyed that it took him thirty years to change it? Because I'd be a bit annoyed by it. Again, I I'm, I'm don't really have a horse to race. I could care less. Um, but I think if I really did give a shit, I'd be like, hey, it's been thirty years, and you're giving me an essay. Just change it and keep it moving. We don't care about your essays, isn't it? That's what I would say. But let's read what he has to say anyway, regardless. I want to hear his essay. Let's see. I have to get the next page okay bear with me it's loading up on facebook let's read what he has to say regarding it and what the apology oh it's a long apology so he starts off with the following he says i have understandably been asked the question of how did you come up with the alias joey negro many times all right cool um if you don't know here's a story back in 99 um i produced my first solo release and i wasn't sure if it was any good or what to do with it i was running a label called republic owned by rough trade at the time and had licensed material from uh nyc label called new groove on several occasions they were a super cool label um so i sent my song to frank and karen there and they said that they liked it and had a gap in the schedule so that we, we could pre uh, prepare to release it Normally, I'm okay at thinking of names, but I just couldn't come up with anything, as I, you know, as I said before. And the label said that they needed all the credits by the end of the week. I had a pile of records next to my desk. Amongst them was a pal, Joey, Reach to Mars, and a J. Walter Negro, Shoot the Pump. I wrote down a few of the names of the vinyl and put them next to each other. The one time uh, I'd heard a J. Walter Negro record on the radio as a new release, and the DJ announced it as Negro. He does have a... Hmm. He loves writing the word Negro, isn't it? This, 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 uh, this uh, uh, I'm not sure how comfortable I am with his um, overuse of the word Negro. He feels uh, oddly comfortable using it, my friend here. But hey, what do I know? Let's continue. It says here. Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, the one time I'd heard the J. Walter Negro record on the radio as a new release, the DJ announced it as Negro, the Spanish pronunciation. That's how I heard it and then used it first as I used it. Yeah. So why didn't I use Dave Lee? He says, in retrospect, I should have done. But to be completely honest, it just uh, seemed boring compared to the likes of Junior Vasquez, David Romales and Frankie Knuckles, who are making some of my favorite records at the time. Now, that is an interesting thing, observation in it, right? Part of me would think, why would you pretend... Or why would you have a racially ambiguous name? It's not as if you're going to get more gigs being that person. But we have to remember, back in 1990, there must have been a time, especially when, you know, I'm assuming those massive house DJ names, you know, some, you know, icons from the Chicago house era were really doing bits in the US, especially, right? Um, or internationally in terms of, you know, the exposure, in terms of how many records they were selling. Because I, I remember... Motor City Drum Ensemble, funny enough, another person that people are saying should change their names. I remember once him saying when he was doing a record digging thing that he always tries to buy records when he's trying to make samples, when he's trying to get samples. He just buys whatever record he can find in a record store that has like a black singer on the front. He doesn't care what it is. He says it's always going to be something golden that he can use. So if you think back to 1990 and you think if you're some, you know, British dude, or some regular dude that has a name, Dave Lee, and you're a producer, and you want to get your name out there, and you want to shift records in your shop, and you know how people, you know, it's pre-internet, people um, are going to come in and just, you know, grab the thing that looks the most exotic or the most, you know, um, sexy, and buy it, because, you know, if it's if you got Jerry Negro sitting next to Junior Vasquez, you're definitely going to buy a new Jerry record record, the Jerry Negro record, sorry. So it's interesting, isn't it? But then, at the same token... I guess nowadays, like myself, when I was when I was first getting when I was first playing techno records, I'd say I had one of my names was Thomas and Thomas, right? 
um, means Thomas and Thomas in German. And part of the reason that I used that moniker and I had like a random picture of like um, Joaquin Phoenix as my avatar was because I wanted to be, I wanted, I wanted my identity to be concealed so that I could give my, myself a chance to play in more in Berlin clubs with having a German sign name. That's what I did, right? a bit ignorant at the time you're a bit naive to think that just having the name alone is going to get me gigs but you know when i thought that was what you needed and i'd email burger directly my dj mixes i thought that would work of course it didn't work but i'd imagine it must happen to more prominent P, uh djs especially my minorities who feel as if they're not getting a, uh, a look in a club because they've got like a you know a quintessential kind of let's say a black dj name a hip-hop name or a name that kind of uh, speaks to their racial identity. They feel as if they had to kind of, you know, play some play some games, right? Um, but interesting, isn't it? Really interesting now. Oh, but again, it, it makes him look worse, to be honest. 30 years and he decides to change it now. Anyway, it says here, it continues. Uh, the, um, it says the Spanish house label Blanco y Negro. Again, Negro, he loves this word, isn't it? <laughs> had a big record with uh, Real Wind House. And there was another song called Piano Negro. I felt Joey Negro gave it a Latin American feel so it would fit in people's record boxes. Many of the, the disco records I bought in the late 70s and early 80s were producers under those pseudonyms. There didn't seem anything odd about not using my birth name. Back then, I never ever imagined a name as a long term thing that I'd ever DJ under or be addressed to as face to face. It was just for the label for that record. Fair enough. Um, and the new Groove record did okay, but I didn't plan to use the Alter Ego. However, a year later, I finished the new AP and I was going to use the alias Raven Maze. <laughs> this guy is like, <laughs> it's a little bit of a donut, no? Like, he seems obsessed with, like, picking names that have nothing to do with who he's about. Like, nothing. It's not, it's not, it's not like, um, I don't know, how do you, I don't know. Um, how can I say who's a good name? Uh... It's not as if you. It's not as if you expect the drums, right? An indie band to rock up and just have t-shirts of the drums printed on themselves, right? Names are not that literal, but his obsession with having an alias that is sort of, I don't know, just ambiguous is really odd, isn't it? Considering how English and you know, straight laced he looks, right? Don't you think that's strange that someone that looks like that would be so obsessed with making sure they pick names that are like you know, uh, Roy? What's, what what was that one he picked there? Con flipping arroz what raven maze like come on geezer man just 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 rock with your name like, it's very very odd i don't know what that says about him or what that says about me reading into it but hey let's continue but, but, but he says i was going to pick the alias raven maze but i played it to a friend and he said it sounded like a follow-up to the new groove release and nothing like the early raven maze record and i should use the name joey negro so that friend is always to blame. Remember to blame me, that friend. He continues, says, I saw his point and took the advice on board. A few months later, I remixed a track off that EP into a song called Do What You Feel. And that became a big club hit that got into the bottom end of the pop charts. The name suddenly became well known to clubbers and record labels. I then began doing lots of remixes. And then I put the, the uh, and then when I put Dave Lee on the mix name credits, the record label would change it to Joe Negra. <laughs> and in fairness to them, this is, was the name of the general public was familiar with. He's, so he's blaming his friend he's blaming his record label there's a lot there's a lot of dancing on here isn't it to be honest he's not really own, owning up to it mate you've been using the name of Joe Negro for 30 years you can't say you didn't want to use it it's a far superior name than Dave Lee right in terms of an entertainer I understand that but come on geez it continues it says um, over the subsequent years I've collaborated with loads of black artists and of course oh, he's doing that I've got black friends thing oh no Dave don't do that Sorry, continue. over the subsequent years, I've collaborated with loads of black artists, and of course, the name has come up with many times whilst working in the studio. I've explained the history of how it came to be, and no one has ever had anything on the no one has any no one has said anything on the lines that they'd find it offensive or should I should change it. In fact, quite the opposite. Like a lot of DJs, there are, there are photos on social media, flyers, and interviews, and they're obviously not black. And it would be wrong if I was pretending to be. Imagine if you rocked up like Rachel Dolezal in full blackface trying to DJ in a sweaty 250 capacity bar somewhere with the makeup running down his face like <laughs> this dj world is flipping bizarre these guys are so odd it's so odd i just don't understand why <laughs> why would you use that name for 30 years if you knew it was the issue <laughs> oh he's a psychopath man let's continue 
He says, I'm obviously not black. Yeah, we know that, mate. And it would be wrong if I was pretending to be. I don't think I've sold more records because mm, that's a lie. He says, I don't think I've sold more records because people thought I was black, but fairly ex fully accept that it could be a conclusion. Mate, he's, he obviously set up here that he wanted to have a name that sounded as sexy as Junior Vasquez and Frankie Knuckles and the, the, and the David Morales. And then he says here that he doesn't think he sold more records. This guy is an absolute melt. I swear, I'm sorry. The, the, in truth, that's why it's not good to find out, you know, to dig digging deep with your art is that you like. Just kind of enjoy the music and keep it moving because when you discover that they've got such <laughs> weird ways of viewing things, it makes you less of a fan. But anyway, let's end it here. It says, in truth, I've not felt comfortable with the name Joey Negra for a while, especially as I got older. Yeah, okay. So much so that you've only changed it when Twitter attacked you, right? Techno Twitter attacks. So I stopped using it a few times, but established a new name as an artist isn't easy, and I've ended up going back to it. Mate, you've got a name, just like God. Oh, this guy's an absolute weapon. It says I understand now that that it's not uh, appropriate for me to carry on using the name. I've recently received emails, tweets, etc., saying that it was unacceptable, and people find out uh, if out of place in 2020. And I agree. From now on, I'm dropping Joey Negro as a pseudonym, and all future releases that were already in production will carry the name they've i'm sorry i've caused any offense my whole life has been about music but particularly black music i love soul funk disco jazz and in any way <laughs> it's impossible for me to articulate in words that i have tried to champion with the best intentions please be aware that the changes are not instant everywhere best left <laughs> oh, this guy man the dj world is a weird world and it? it's really bizarre i don't know what to say to that one i think he's talking out of his ass personally you had 30 years to change it you didn't want to change it because it was you know it was a far better name than your own names that you made up that kind that for that con your arez whatever arrows one he had before was absolutely trash that ruby made so i understand why he wanted to change it but come on don't try and convince us otherwise you you wanted a cool black name because you were djing in the period when cool black djs were in vogue you know and then now you've been called out for it, it is what it is just take it on the chin and keep it moving isn't it but these djs man bloody hell insane <laughs> Oh, absolutely wild, absolutely wild. But it's 